Hey, it's Lee Halliday, and in this video, we will be comparing two different charting libraries. We'll be comparing victory charts to recharts, and we'll build an area chart in both of these libraries so that we can compare and contrast, see what the differences are, maybe why you choose one over another. But first things first, anytime you're building charts, you need some data to put into those charts. And the data we'll be using comes from the GitHub GraphQL API. So what I've done is I've queried the last 100 repositories I've created, and I've gotten the created at field for each of them. So it returns a long list of these different repositories I've created, but it's not really in the right format. So if we move over to the code base, this is the format we need our data in. We basically need an array of objects where we have an X, which is the year that I created that repository, and the Y, which is the number of repos that I created. I wrote a script to basically take this raw data and convert it into the format that we need. I'm not going to go over this, but it will be in the repository, which I'll push to GitHub to increase the 2019 number by one. And um, you can take a look at it, and we'll be linking to that below. So given that the data looks like this, let's get started. And we'll be doing the victory chart first. As you can see, beautiful chart coming soon to this React app. So what package are we using? It's victory, and the version we're on is uh, 33.1.7, which is the latest at the time of making this video. Let's just get started and I'll explain what these uh, components are as we use them. So the first one we'll be doing is one called victory chart. And this is sort of a wrapper that you can put around an area chart, a bar chart, and you can actually combine them. It's in charge of the domain. And what is the domain? That's the X and the Y sort of values and what scale they're at for the charts you're building. So inside of this victory chart, we will put a victory area. So if we just stop it like this and go back, we can already see that it's built us a chart. I'm not really sure what data it's charting. It's sort of charting from one uh, on both the X and the Y scale, but it's a good start. So let's give it our data. And luckily, as I mentioned, it's already in the right format, an array of X and Y uh, values. So if we come back, we can already see the area chart is starting to come into place. We're sort of showing the 2015 numbers and it's gradually increasing as we get to the current year. So next thing we might wanna do is add a number above each of these little points here to say how many is at this point in the graph. So we can do that by adding labels. Great, true, 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 true. That's exactly what I wanted, no? Now, what this receives is a function and the function receives something that has datum. And what datum is, is basically each of these values here, which has an X and a Y. So what we want is the datum dot Y. So we come back and now we're seeing the correct number above each of the points. So the next thing we can do is maybe give it a bit of color. You can see up here, I have a colors object with this beautiful teal color. So what we'll do is we'll style this forget if it's style or styles. I think it's style, yeah. So we'll be styling the data, and specifically on the data, the fill, and we will give that colors.teal. So now it's a great teal color. It's starting to actually look pretty decent. And we can make it look even better because Victory Chart comes with a bunch of themes you can apply to your chart. So we'll use the theme prop, and we'll pass in victorytheme.material. And you can see up here all of the different um, components I've imported from the Victory library. We're just gonna be working with three actually, so it's pretty straightforward. And after applying the theme, it looks nicer, but it sort of ballooned it up really tall, and I didn't really want it that tall. So we can come back to our Victory chart and give it a width, which we'll say 800, and a height of 400. So you can see that I have the victory chart inside of a div that has a max width 800 with margin auto to sort of get it in the center. So you may think that this is pixels, 800 pixels by 400 height. You could think of it more like a ratio though because, um, well, it's looking great now. It's sort of this ratio of sort of double width to height. And if I change the screen size, you can see that it's responsive. 
but it's not really keeping it at 800 and 400 pixels, but it is keeping that same aspect ratio. So I think that's the right way to go about tackling it. So what we've ended up with is a pretty nice looking area chart. We've got this Cartesian um, grid going on that was given to us and styled by applying the material theme. Um, we've given it some colors. We've added labels to this and our data. So the victory one is good to go. Now we'll be building the recharts version of the area chart. So we'll replace this beautiful chart coming soon with a container. So the container we're using is the responsive container. Much like victory chart, we can wrap um, a combination of different charts inside of it. And the chart we'll be putting inside of it is the area chart, like this. So where are all these components coming from? I've imported them from recharts. You can see that there's about, uh, what's that, eight or so. And uh, it's a little bit more expressive than victory, which can be a pro and a con. It's, it's more flexible, but it's a little bit harder to, to get working out of the box. And all this comes from version 185 of recharts, which is the latest at the time of recording this. So if we come down inside of our area chart, we'll have to even put the x-axis. So without this, you basically get nothing. Um, so with the x-axis, even still, we need to tell it which um, data key to use from our data. First things first, we need some data available to our chart. And then we'll tell it the, the data key is X. It doesn't really make assumptions like Victory does. But if we come here, you can see that we're now drawing the X axis. So same thing, we'll draw the Y axis, which is data key Y. There we go. The nice thing about this is you can call them anything you want. It's a little bit more flexible. Um, so I could call this like num repositories and this one year. But since we're sharing the data, we'll keep it like this. But you can see we're not actually drawing any area chart inside of these axes. So we'll do that. So we use area for that. We need to tell it which data key to draw. And we do that. And we should start to have this area chart drawing now. So it's missing a few things that Victory has. It's missing uh, this nice dashed Cartesian grid. It's missing the labels. So why don't we do the labels first? So the labels go inside of the area component. And it's a component called the label list. And we again need to give it which data key to be showing. We can tell it where to position them. And we can give it a bit of an offset so that it's not quite touching the line. It's like a little bit above, about 10 pixels. So now we have the number showing up. And the next thing we want to do is to put in this nice Cartesian grid. So how do you add a Cartesian grid? With the Cartesian grid component. Everything's a component in recharts. So we'll add in the grid. It's looking ah, not the most nice Cartesian grid. It's not dashed or anything. So what we can do is we can set the color of the stroke. That's the line. And for that, we will use colors dot uh, light gray. And we can set a property called stroke dash array. And this is a value of five, five to basically turn this into a dashed. So it's, it's looking pretty good now. Um, this 38 is being cut off. So why don't we fix that next? So if we come up to the area chart, we can set the margin on it. And margin works with uh, top pixels, right, bottom, and left. So I found that left can be set to zero. We don't really need margin there. But now you can see that the 38 is fitting inside of the frame. And recharts is responsive, except it's got that sort of funky animation thing going on. If you like it, you can keep it, but I am going to get rid of it. So on the area, we can, is it called, is animation active? We can just set this to false so that we're, we're not getting the animations anymore. All right, I personally think that's better. Okay, next up, there's this cool little tooltip component we can add to, as you hover, it sort of follows you around and shows you what number you're hovering over. So we can come down here and we can add the tooltip. Tip. I don't think you even need to give it anything. 
Okay, there we go. So 2016 is 13 repos, except you don't really want to show the user why, right? So we can fix that by coming to area and giving it a name. So this is the number of repos. Okay, so in 2018, 26 repos. So far this year, 38 repos. And I think the only thing left to do is to give it the same sort of coloring uh, that we gave to the victory version. So we do that by setting the fill. So fill will be colors.teal. That should give us that. And see how this line above is like a blue color? If we wanted to change that, I believe that's the stroke. So colors dot, what do I got? Blue gray. Okay, I think it changed it, although it's pretty similar. So there we go. We have two versions of an area chart. The first one being built with victory, second one with recharts. Uh, I prefer the look and the feel sort of with this tooltip and stuff of recharts, but you could see that it was a little bit more complicated to make. It's what, more than double the components, more than double the lines of code, but it gives you a lot of flexibility. Now the downfall of recharts and why you might choose victory, uh, A for simplicity, and B, victory actually works really great with React Native. So if you're also building a React Native app and you wanna use the same charting library in both of them, you can basically use almost the same code and it will give you nice looking charts both in the web and React Native. So in this app, we built two area charts in victory, recharts, we compared them, we contrasted them, and you saw sort of the differences between them, why you might choose one or the other. And we also talked a little bit about how to wind up with the data we need. Again, I didn't cover this in detail, but inside of the uh, data, I wrote some comments about sort of what I was doing to the raw data to, to end up with the X and the Y value for each of those. So I hope you liked this video. I'll be sharing the finished product um, below, below this video in the comments. Um, take care. Bye.